morning. You are great. Hi, hi, hi. Good to see you. <laughs> so glad you're here. If you guys want to go ahead and find, find your seats or if you want to come up the front for worship. Go ahead and stand up. We're so glad you're joining us. If you're joining us from on Bethel TV or home or wherever you're at today, we're so thankful that you're tuning in. We're believing God is gonna transform your life this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You guys are good. There's a lot of space up front. Come, come, you can, you can join us. Thank you, Jesus. Who's ready for a good morning? A couple of weeks ago, um, Bill opened the service and he said it's a season of faith and courage. Say faith and courage. And I was, I was praying for a situation in a, a friend's life um, about, about two weeks ago as well. And as I was praying, I realized I started going through the motions of just kind of praying, not necessarily believing that my prayers were going to bring that availeth much, as the Bible says. And as I did that, I felt this gift of faith come upon me. And I heard the Lord say, it's time for hometown victories. And Hometown Victory, whether you are tuning in online or with us, you are part of our family. And so that applies to all of us. But I felt like the Lord said, it's time for us to see breakthrough in our families. And it's time for us to step up in faith. And I believe God is gonna start to do radical things amongst us. But I felt stirred that it's not by us drumming something up. There is a replenishing and there's a, a refreshing of faith and faith is a gift. And I felt like the Lord said today, He is distributing the gift of faith upon His people. And it's time for us to, and I, I just, I, I know I'm, I'm, we're about to go into worship. People are gonna get healed in worship. They're gonna get healed today. As you go home, I believe kids are getting set free from night terrors. That The Lord is just gonna get a hold of your family and you're gonna see tangible breakthrough. But I, I felt like the Lord says, some of you have had a word from God. You've had a word from God for your family or the last couple of years and you feel like the opposite is happening. And I remember at the beginning of 2022, God said to me, Ruth, this is a year of breakthrough. And the year started and uh, quickly we, we lost a baby in pregnancy. My dad got diagnosed with cancer. We started going through multiple things. And I was like, God, you said this was a year of breakthrough, but this doesn't feel like a year of breakthrough. And God said to me, Ruth, in order to that, for there to be breakthrough, there needs to be something to break through. See, some of you have had a situation in your life where you're like, God, this is impossible. Well, guess what? The gift of faith is coming upon you. God is who He says He is and He will fulfill what He said over your life. I want you to just hold out your hands right now. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray for the gift of faith to come upon you. That we would take a hold of the words, the promises, the things that God has said, that this is a season of hometown victories. This is a season of breakthrough in our families. And we would believe that no matter what is in front of us, the God of the universe is wanting to break through and He's wanting to use us. So God, I thank You for the tangible gift of faith coming upon this people. God, I thank You that You have marked us as a people that would pursue the supernatural. God, I thank You that there is nothing that we can do to earn this, but You are refreshing, replenishing, restoring storing our faith right now, Holy Spirit. Faith is a substance, faith is a gift. Some of you are gonna start to feel that on your hands right now. And I do believe that many of you, as we do go into worship this morning, are gonna receive a touch from heaven and that your bodies are gonna be healed and situations are gonna change. So just as we're about to go in, I'd love for you to turn to someone next to you and just greet them, but ask them, what are you believing for today? What are you believing for as that Word of Faith is released and begin to pray over them? Begin to pay a target on them and their families. If you're joining us at home, put it in the chat. What are you believing for this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus, my strong redeemer, you rescue again and again. I'm not disappointed when I place my trust in your hand. your vast affection you open your arms to my soul and you suffer to save me so I know you won't let me go nothing could tear us apart you're the one thing that's more Nothing. Oh, nothing could tear. 
good news today. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. That there's not a thing that could save from your never ending love, Jesus. No, there's not a thing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing could separate. There's not a thing that could say Yeah, come on No regret No mistake Well, there's not a thing that could say Come on, if you're thankful, sing it Not my, not my past Not my shame
Thank you for your love. Yes, thank you for your love. Yes, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus.
we were in worship I kept on asking the Lord what do you want to do what are you doing in the room and what do you want to do and sometimes there's really nothing to do but just to rest with him and who he is you know oftentimes we can make this thing so complicated when really all it is is finding his love, finding where his love is and just simply loving him back. And I'm reminded of my, my first moment where I encountered the love of God for the first time. And whether you're online or in the room, I feel this invitation for us to go back to that very first time. That in the busyness of life and responsibilities and bills or work or kids or whatever it is, there's an invitation for us just to go back and reset to that first love, that first moment. And so what I want to invite you to do is just to lift your hands. If you're, if you're encountering God sitting down, stay sitting down, but if you're able to stand up, but I just want you to lift your hands to heaven right now. And I just want you to become aware of the love of God in the room. That all we have to do is just simply receive His love and just love Him back. And so in your own way, whatever that looks like, I just want you just to start offering love back to Him. And in this place, Paul and Hannah, they're gonna lead us back into verse one. And as they sing, I just want to invite you to allow the love of God just to wash over you, to wash over you.
was to you then, he is able to be to you now. And so Father, I just thank you for your grace. I thank you for your presence, that wherever we go, whatever we're going through, that you're there ever present with us. That whatever hardship, whatever high, whatever low, we have the ability just to stop and stand and just simply turn our attention and everything changes, everything changes. Amen. Come on, why don't you give Jesus a shout of praise? So good. And thank the worship team, Paul, Hannah, team is amazing. And then just wanna encourage you as you go back to your seat, if you have any open seats available next to you, just go ahead and raise a hand uh, with a number of fingers of how many seats are next to you. That would be so helpful. Um, and then as we do that, welcome Libby and Ella Gordon. <laughs> Good morning, church. We are so excited to have you here with us. We have so many exciting things that the Lord's doing in the life of our church. So while you find your seats, I am just gonna prep you because if you have a guest or a visitor around you, there's a high chance they're here for Open Heavens this week. Um, if you are already here, we only start Open Heavens on Wednesday. If you're joining us online for our Open Heavens conference this year, or you are joining us in person, why don't you, wait, let's make sure everyone's got their seats. Yes, okay, you can, faithful ones, you can place your hands down. There are many people whose hands are still raised. Why don't you give us an indication by just raising your hand in this moment if you're joining us for Open Heavens this week. Okay, church, look around the room. That is incredible. Super, super exciting. And I know there'll be a ton in our overflow room as well, and then online as well. So we're so excited for that. If you are part of our staff, you might have heard that we had an incredible outpouring of the Lord in our lake building. Uh, one of our staff, actually Ruth Moore, was telling us about in the pre-service prayer that during one of the sessions in our ministry school, the Holy Spirit was breaking out in such power that after the session ended, 
the staff went out. Don't worry, this is real life. Here, don't, you laughing, but this has happened to you because you have children too. Um, and, uh, or if you don't, it will happen to you one day. Um, and, uh, and the staff actually spilt out out of uh, the room, it was an online session and the Holy Spirit started moving in all of the offices along the corridor. There were staff members and students spilling out on the floor and they were getting text messages that in the evening, there were still some of our staff and students who were just laid out in encounters. And so we are trusting the Lord. This is one thing that happened this week in the life of our church. I heard rumours from my husband about BC baptisms where parents were getting in the water in their clothes to baptize their children uh, and just so many exciting things happening. So if you are new and this is your first time in the life of our church, why don't you uh, give us an indication, just wave your hand for us. Let's welcome them church family in this moment. And if you're online, you can give us a shout as well. And uh, if you want to get plugged in to what the Lord is doing in our midst, you can keep your hand raised. Our ushers, hello, my baby. Our ushers are going to give you a card. You can fill out your information on that. And then you can drop it in the offering or go to our info desk to do more. My daughter is telling me as I picked her up. There's Hannah, Mama. Um, she's a church baby. She's even recognizing everyone in the church. Um, hi, Hannah. We love you. Um, and uh, if you are a first-time visitor and maybe you're just visiting for a time, you can join us at our, in our south lobby. The exit's right there at the back. And we have some incredible ministers, volunteers who would love to pray, prophesy over you, and just answer any questions you have in the life of our church. So if you haven't already, back in, the Lord is about to do even more incredible things in our midst. So why don't we roll church news? Hi Bethel family. We have some exciting updates for you, but it's also uh, our last church news announcement. Don't, don't cry on camera, Paula. It, pull it together. I always pull it together. cry. Pull it together, we're gonna make it. Here's this week's church news. Guys, last weekend we shared some really exciting vision and updates about what God is doing with our Collier Campus Project. If you missed it, you can watch it back on YouTube or Bethel TV. It was a time of celebrating God's faithfulness and stewarding the words spoken over our movement. Over the coming weeks, there are going to be more opportunities to engage and partner with us, including gatherings, roundtable discussions with leadership, and more. Check out Bethel.com slash build to stay up to date. We've got two new equip classes coming up. Visit Bethel.com slash equip to get all of the details. First, Somos Uno or We're One is starting October 3rd. Spanish speakers, come learn and get tools to bring greater strength and wholeness to your marriage. Then come learn the foundations of the prophetic ministry at the five-week prophetic ministry training. Get equipped, edified, and activated in the prophetic. Love After Marriage is hosting a five-day workshop November 6th through the 10th to help married couples experience breakthrough and freedom in their marriage. Listen, a thriving marriage is a marriage that's alive and well, and it is the best. Trust me. Register at Bethel.com slash events. November 1st through the 3rd, join us in person for Leaders Conference 2023. You will be equipped as a catalyst, prepared to release the truth and hope of the gospel into every sphere. We hope to see you there for this marking time. Register now at Bethel.com slash events. And that's it for this week's church news. Yes, if you miss any of these announcements, visit Bethel.com slash church news to learn more. Have an amazing week. Ciao, ciao. All right, it's always awkward to see yourself on the screen and then come up here and I'm like, hi, it's me again. <laughs> well, it's offering time. Can we stand church? Oh, I love offering time. This is something that, 
you know, we do every week and, and many times, you know, if there's something that you do consistently, it's you have to make an intentional choice to engage your faith. And so can we agree that this morning we're going to engage our faith this morning in every part of service? Amen. Amen. I, I was just thinking about um, just offering and, um, you know, each week me and my wife, we do something where we, you know, we have our tithe that we give. Um, and then we have, you know, on top of that things that we give. And sometimes we, we do this thing where we're like, all right, let's get a number um, from the Lord and, and see if it's the same thing. And usually it's not. And we just, and we take the, the higher one. Um, but it's easy, to, it's easy to do that when like we look at our bank account and it's like, man, I like that. I like that number. But in the times where it's like, hmm, that's, that's a little, little interesting. And we do that, it costs us something. But I love those moments where we're like, oh, this is, this is an act of faith that we just got a number that feels beyond what we're, we're used to giving. And so this morning, I want you to take out whatever you have to give, whether it's your phone or your wallet, and I just want you to hold it up, and I want you to say something with me real quick. Jesus, I will engage my faith with what I have. Amen. Okay, we're going to read offering reading number two. And so whether you have tithe this morning, if you, if you are not a part of Bethel Church, we would encourage you to hold your tithe to give to your home church. But anything above that, we welcome it. And so let's read offering reading number two. As we receive today's offering, we are believing heaven open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations, anointings, giftings, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessing and increase upon me so that I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So ushers are going to be passing the baskets and we want to invite up our pastor, Dan. Good to see you. Well done. Hey everybody, how are you? Are you? You look good. You look fabulous. Hey, we're gonna, uh, we didn't forget communion. We know we handed it to you. We're gonna take it at the end <laughs> together. And I'm gonna try to preach fast and give us a chunk of time to just celebrate and be in the presence of the Lord. Uh, Bill and Chris send their hellos. They are in Austin celebrating the five-year anniversary of Bethel Austin. Uh, so it's super exciting with uh, uh, Renee and, and Joaquin. And then to, I think today sometimes Chris is flying to New York City. New York City. Uh, that's an old TV commercial for those in the room. <laughs> um, there'll be another one later in the message. But uh, uh, to, to, for the opening night of Bethel, New York, and uh, with uh, Joel and Sarah Power, it's going to be a beautiful, dynamic, amazing time. So they send their love, and we're, just, we're so excited about what they're going to be up to and what they're doing. Online, great to see you. I know I don't see you, but, you know, proverbially, great to see you. I'm sure it's great to see me, <laughs> which is actually what's happening. So we've, um, we're, we're in that time of uh, having vision and raising funds for our new facility up on Collier. It's been beautiful. Chris has spoken powerfully about vision that he has for Reading, for, this, for, the, for the globe, really, and then also for our local church. And that was two weeks ago. If you didn't hear that message, beautiful. Bill spoke really powerfully about the, uh, the building uh, project, again, the building project, steel's not important, it's the bringing of the kingdom, that's the thing, right? It's the equipping and, tra was that not true? I didn't get a very good amen from you. Steel's not the thing, it's the equipping and training of the saints for the, the ongoing global uh, revival and transformation, the, his kingdom, you know, the, the kingdoms of this world becoming his kingdom, and that's what we're up to. And so a, they gave some just beautiful messages on that, and I encourage you to, to uh, 
listen to those. I have a message that's been brewing in my heart for a while. I try to like shake it off. I don't know if you've ever done that with a, a preach and just feel like, man, I'm not sure this is like a vision Sunday deal, but I felt like the Lord said, no, no, this is totally in line with our vision, our, our senior leadership team. There's about 20 of us on our senior leadership team and Bill and Chris just in line with that. And so um, I'm going to talk to you about something that we probably don't talk about a ton and I don't want to trigger you. Ushers, lock the doors. The, uh, <laughs> so... Is he going to talk about money? Not today. You're lucky. But I'm, gonna, I'm, uh, I'm actually going to talk about the wrath of God and um, spend some time have, helping you unpack that. And I can't, yes, no, I meant it. Stay seated. You're good. <laughs> Listen, I, I can tell, like, um, at some level, the wrath of God, you know, it just, it, it, it makes us scared a couple of reasons. One is that we have human examples of wrath. And you just got to remember, first Sunday school lesson, God's not a human He's not you, only bigger. So in other words, what, wherever you have a human definition of wrath, that is not what we're talking about today. When I talk about God's wrath, we're not talking about your angry father or stepfather. We're not talking about your boss. We're not talking about your own propensity to blow up or any of those sorts of things. There's a, it's a really important concept just to understand that God speaks freely about his wrath and we have to make sure we're not misunderstanding him when he's speaking to us. That'll make us panic. And, you know, I feel like I don't know you. My heart is for you to, like, love your word and be able to kind of, you know, recognize and embrace every part of it. And part of his wrath is one of the ways he reveals himself to us. So it's important that we have a good, accurate definition and understanding of that. And then also, um, not just to love your word, but your word is, it's all designed to get you in touch with the author. If you read this and don't know him, you're doing it wrong. I just, FYI, I might have changed your life right there. If you read this and don't know him and aren't entered, connected to him, then it's, it's actually not the purpose for which scripture was given to us. And so um, in communion, oh, we'll, we'll save that for a minute. Part of our church, our, you know, 70 years have been a congregation. We've been blessed to grow. We've had to build pretty regularly every 20 years or so. By his grace, he's continually been sufficient and, done a, and just blessed this house. But when we talk about what our vision is, again, I would just, I think I speak for all of our leadership team to say that part of it is, has never changed it one iota for one instant. And that was, is that salvation is through Christ alone. That he, his death and resurrection are the central core of our existence. There is no other way it, to delight the Lord or in the presence of God other than him. He says, Jesus says, I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in Acts chapter 4, neither is there any other name given under heaven among men whereby ye must be saved. So central to our message is, is this idea that Christ has saved us. The question is, saved us from what? Saved us from what? And this is where it gets interesting. Some of us would be really comfortable going, well, he saved me from my sin. I'm like, absolutely, that's absolutely true. But I'm going to also tell you that the cross of Jesus saved you from the wrath of God. It saved you from the wrath of God. And, and again, if that word's triggering you, I'm going to give you a definition that I think is biblically accurate and better than the one knocking around in your head right now. <laughs> and um, I began to kind of think about this, especially as I was, I was privileged to you know, be working on this project of just working on the study notes, along with many other great leaders. I, we kind of gathered up all their good work and, and began to just edit and go through it. Um, but this... This reading in the Old Testament about the wrath of God and then in, in the New Testament about the wrath of God. And some of us might think, isn't, Old Testament, isn't the Old Testament about the wrath of God? You'd think. You'd think, but no. In fact, I'm going to read to you about, oh, 10 verses from the New Testament about the wrath of God. And so whatever you try to like disconnect the Old Testament and jettison it, that's not for you. Uh, that because the same testimony of who God is in the Old Testament is the same testimony of who he is in the New Testament as well. And so that sometimes there's some crazy teaching out there about, oh, you know, the Old Testament so for, the Old, you know, for another day. Like, no, no, the Old Testament anticipated Christ. It prepared us and made us wise for salvation. Then Christ came and we understand Christ in light of the Old Testament. They go together like peanut butter and jelly. All right. <laughs> That's from seminary. All right, so 
Jesus Christ is our Savior. I'm going to just read to you. It's a little bit of a, of a read, but I think it's so powerful. And N.T. Wright, this is from his commentary on Revelation, and he's commenting on a quote by another theologian and teacher uh, called um, H. Richard uh, Niebuhr. And I think he does a beautiful job of like reminding us of the, the essence and the central message of the gospel here. So, he, um, he starts off by just talking about how difficult it is to talk about the wrath of God. And he goes on to say, we would much rather live in a world without wrath. Amen. NT, that's, that's true. Uh, live in a world without wrath. We would all much rather imagine a God without wrath. Huh? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. We would all... Um, in fact, a substantial part of the mainstream Western Christianity has imagined just that and has followed through with the consequences of that. H. Richard Niebuhr, one of America's most famous 20th century theologians and brother of the even more famous Reinhold Niebuhr, once remarkably described, uh, memorably, uh, described the message of the ultra-liberal liberal Christianity, and here it is. This is the quote. A God without wrath brought men without sin into a kingdom without judgment through the ministrations of a Christ without a cross. <laughs> he was describing the temptation of a sort of Christianity that doesn't have the cross at the center and has jettisoned wrath. But if you jettison this idea of wrath, you really jettison the idea of the cross. Because we're really not being saved from anything. He goes on to say, and I'll, I'll just read the quote again. A God without wrath brought men without sin into a kingdom without judgment through the ministration of the Christ without a cross. And I would probably say the correction is, if you could just think along with me, the truth of the New Testament is there is a God with wrath who brought men who were filled with sin into a kingdom that de does have a judgment component through his own cross. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. He goes on, it's, uh, we might have preferred a gospel like that, but it certainly isn't the one we've got. And it certainly doesn't match the world we've got. That's the problem. In any family or school or business or country, uh, in any organization or system of whatever sort, there will be uh, problems. Things will go wrong. Human pride, greed, fear, or suspicion will tend to take over. Can you think of any organizations where pride... Fear, greed, and suspicion are trying to take over? Hmm, just about every single one I'm a part of. <laughs> Except this church. Anyway, so. But I mean, like, this is like sinful humans. We get in there and this stuff starts happening. And it starts like pulling on us and, and yanking us around our own desire and drive to get our needs fet, uh, met no matter what. Uh, he says, um, Unless these things are spotted, named, and dealt with, it will only get worse. If these things are allowed to flourish unchecked, it can even be hailed as a new way of living. Can you think about things that unchecked, uh, somebody saying that's not true, that's not how humans flourish, is now hailed by the world as a new way of living? Happens over and over again. He's going to mention three, and I think you, can, you and I could probably add three or four more to this, but he said that it, um, that's the story of the 20th century, was in part the story of just that. New ways of being, communism, fascism, and apartheid being just three of the most obvious. They reared their ugly heads and did untold damage to people and societies until eventually they collapsed under their own weight not least of which the weight of the lies which were needed to sustain them. Yeah. So this is human culture, human so society, just how we kind of think through and, and, and try to get our needs met in, in any way we want. And I would say there's materialism is another one. You know, if communism is not as, a, as attractive um, as it once was in the, in the mid-1900s, transgenderism is a way of, hey, it's a new way of being. And I would say there's a lot of lies that are built around that to sustain that. You know, consumerism, materialism. So we, we, there's a reason that God is going to judge these behaviors and how destructive they are. He, just finishing up his quote here, he says, um, it was partly because of H. Richard Niebuhr that he could see what was going on in the church that he warned us against a wrathless, sinless, crossless message. 
That bears repeating. <laughs> the great theologian warned us against a wrathless, sinless, crossless message. It might lull us to sleep just when we need to be most wide awake. Goes on, just a couple more sentences. The wrath of the creator consists of two things. Principally, first, he allows human wickedness to work its way out, to reap its own destruction. But secondly, he steps in more directly to stop it, to call time on it when it's gotten out of hand. And if we knew our business, we would thank God for both of these, even though both can appear harsh. They need to be harsh. If they were merely, uh, if they were any less harsh, the wickedness in question would merely pause, furrow its brow for a moment, and then carry on as before. Yeah, it's good for me that it's N.T. Wright. That that particular little preach was from him. (laughs) And so um, it becomes super important for the, the Christian church to kind of just have an understanding of this idea of the wrath of God. And again, I've already said to you, It's not like human wrath. It's not God's unchecked rage. It's not God's intimidation. It's not God's, I've had it up to here. I've had all I can stands. I can't stands no more. I'm going old school today. That's Popeye for you playing along at home. (laughs) But this is what we think about with wrath. And so when we read about wrath, we don't, we don't, we we just kind of, that's not for me. And you're right, it's not for you. But I need you to know why it's not for you. You got saved from it. You got saved from it. That's why it's not for you. Nothing you did, nothing you earned, you just got saved from it. And I I think in some ways, you you know, I love grace. I teach on it a lot. I don't, I think it's a gospel of grace. But again, it's a gospel of grace. We've been saved from something. And it's from the wrath of God and, and the wear and tear of our own sin on each other. And this has been the great rescue plan of Jesus in his death and his resurrection. So I want to encourage you to have a, um, a, you know, a good definition for wrath when you read it, because I'm about to read, read to you about, oh, I don't know, 10, 10 Bible verses full of wrath. Ta-da! Happy Sunday to you all. And so, uh, but these are straight out of your New Testament and mine. <laughs> and so I'm, I want to build a new definition, just like when I've talked to you about grace. I think you miss it if you think it's just undeserved love, and I think you miss it if you think it's, it, it, it is just power to be transformed. But if you hold those together... Grace is actually undeserved love and power to be transformed, then you properly understand grace. You understand that grace loves me right in the middle of my most heinous, humiliating sin. Loves me right there. Loves me too much to leave me in this mess. And will provide a way out of it in transformation. So having a good definition of wrath is super, super important. And then I'm going to ask you to kind of memorize it, Uh uh-huh, kind of memorize it, and then we'll use it in the scriptures we're about to read. So, Rath, let me just kind of talk to you again. It's not, it's not, he's out of control, he's not a rageaholic. Some of us, it's his worst, our worst fear is he's actually a rageaholic back there. Like behind the nice Jesus facade, you're just mad all the time, you know, because that's how I live. I'm just mad all the time. And you're probably a lot like me. You're like, no, 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 he's nothing like you. Did I say this? I've preached this a couple of times. It's important to re- realize that we are like him because we're made in his image, but he is not like us. This will, this, will, this will change your life. If you just think he's a big human only, the you on volume 10, or the you on, you know, the, on the niceness scale amped up, that's not who he is at all. So you are like, you and I are made in his image. We are like him, but be clear, he is not like us. And so when we talk about wrath, we just realize this human emotion of powerlessness, self, is not what's going on for him. So he, um, a good, good definition, it, his wrath is pure, it is holy. And here's the definition I want you to hold on to. God's wrath is the event, I already blew your mind right there, because <laughs> you think it's his emotion. God's wrath is the event. The event of God's just corporate judgment on sin. Now, there's more to say about that, but if we could just kind of go through that together. God's wrath is the event, say the event, yes. yeah, of his just corporate judgment, of his just corporate judgment on sin. So when we're talking about this, when we say the wrath of God was poured out on Christ on the cross, we're saying in that event, the just judgment of the Lord on human sin 
was poured out on him. Now, again, God's wrath, you see it. It's an Old Testament concept and a New Testament concept. I don't have too much time to break into this, but real quickly, in the Old Testament, you do hear about, quite a bit about the wrath of God and the day of the Lord. And you, do, you need to realize, though, it's connected with God's relationship with Israel oftentimes, also his, his judgment on the way Israel was treated by other nations would be another place of his wrath. But just to talk about it, the, Lord never, the Lord's wrath is never expressed. In other words, there's never an event of his wrath without plenty of warning. <laughs> a big bunch of prophets come along or a big bunch of Bible teachers. An incredible amount of patience displayed by him. And grace to step out of it, to come out of it. So when we think about God's wrath, we just think like, it's going to happen now. It's, we, we treat it like dad, like he's in a good mood or bad mood. Are we walking on eggs with mom today? Are we not? We just, we got to get rid of all that little kid that our upbringing and get it out of it and go to the New Testament to define, sorry, go to the New and Old Testament to define this. So Israel uh, broke the covenant. Uh, remember, they broke into two nations. Israel, uh, right after Solomon, broke into two nations. Israel in the north, they fell immediately in, into idolatry, setting up two calves to worship Yahweh, which broke the Ten Commandments right first day. You know what we do? We're going to break the Ten Commandments very first day. And uh, <laughs> so that, you know, that happened. And then he, uh, you know, he sends prophets. They have the great prophets, Elijah and Elisha, speaking to them, as well as others. He's warning, warning, warning. And then somewhere around from 1,000 to 7, so about, I don't know, 200 years later, after 200 years of patient warning and grace, he brings a wrath, the event of his just corporate judgment on the nation of Israel in the northern kingdom. About 200 years after that, Judah as well has been just had a few revivals with Hezekiah and Josiah, but predominantly their kings have been syncretists. They've, had, they've been worshiping other gods all along. And again, the Lord sends prophets, lots of patience, lots of truth-telling. And then uh, when they don't respond to that, uh, he brings, there's a day of wrath that's poured out when Babylon invades Judah and takes a bunch of them captive and a bunch of them lose their lives. And when he, God abandons the temple that they thought, oh, he'll never abandon the temple. The Lord goes, watch me, and leaves. <laughs> and so we, we have an Old Testament, the, this idea of his wrath is an event of his just judgment on corporate sin. You got that? Okay. So again, let's, take, let's go into the New Testament and just... Uh, Take a look at several scriptures about this, and I want you to have this proper definition, not this fearful rage, unhinged, out of control, drunken stupor of an overly powerful, but none of that, but actually an episode of God's just corporate judgment. That's what we're talking about here. You might say, Dan, isn't this just the same gospel message we've been preaching? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That they'll come a time, and he's like saying, Enough. Enough. That when, you, when you find out that justice can actually go, no. No more. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. This is in the lips, these are on the lips of John the Baptist. And again, just to remind you, I'm, the scripture not, it helps us love God, but it creates a worldview, a reality map about how we're supposed to see the world. And a lot of us, again, you know, we just, we love grace so much, we just forget about wrath. And I'm like, grace and wrath are hopelessly combined. Grace is rescue from wrath. <laughs> to have a grace culture without a concept that God actually will say no to sin and put an end to it is to like, take the gospel apart in a way it should not be taken apart. Matthew chapter 3, 7, John the Baptist says, And when, you, when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, Hey, snakes. Ah. I actually, <laughs> actually says, You bunch of snakes. <laughs> you brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Let's use our definition. Who warned you to flee from the event of God's just corporate judgment on sin? Wow. Do you see it there? Not from God's bad mood at my poor choices. But who told you to flee from that? John 3, 18. This one doesn't use the word wrath, but again, it gives us, uh, this is 3, 18, and I love it. John 3, 16 is held up at baseball games and stuff. It's beautiful. I always think, add 17. No, 18, 2. Add, let's go all the way through verse 20. Because... Uh, <laughs> 
because it actually tells a worldview of how Jesus sees the world. And the beautiful part is that, that for God so loved the world, he came, you know, he gave his only son, but there's actually additional truth that comes. He did not come to the world, condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's beautiful. Verse 17, here's verse 18. He who believes in him, this is Jesus, is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. This is the judgment that light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds are evil. The Lord's worldview is that humanity apart from Christ stands judged already, is already walking in condemnation. That's not often ours. We're like, we're just, people are just doing the best they can, right? You know, they're trying to find God in Islam, trying to find God in Hindu. Like, they're just doing the best they can. That is not the worldview of Scripture. It's that humans, apart from a, a repentance and connection with Jesus, stand in judgment already. They are in line for that event of God's just corporate judgment. And when I say just, I mean you would agree with it. This is the right thing to do. You know, it says in Revelation that the, the altar itself calls out and says, you are right in your, in your judgments. It's a personification of the altar saying to Jesus, you are right in what you are doing. The worship songs of heaven say your statutes and your, your judgments are true. David said you're, they're, they're altogether righteous. So let's go on here. Um, John three thirty six. he who believes in the Son has eternal life. Woo, it just got nice in here. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who does not obey the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. But the event awaits him of the just corporate judgment of the Lord. Romans 1.18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Romans 2.5, but because of your stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourselves in the day of wrath. We got a double wrath whammy here. Wrath for yourselves on the day of wrath. You're storing up judgment for yourself on the day of judgment. Did you hear that? You're storing up judgment, just judgment, on the day of corporate judgment. Um, Romans 5, 9, much more than having now been justified by his blood, that's about us, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. This idea, what are you saved from? When you say Jesus is your savior, my own sin, yes, good answer. His just judgment, his corporate just judgment against human sin, I'm also saved from that too. This is the great hope of the gospel of Jesus. He goes on to say, never take your own vengeance, uh, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, the just judgment of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I'll repay. And then Ephesians chapter two, this verse is gonna flip on this gorgeous, uh, you'll know when we get there. And you are all dead in your, in your trespasses and sins. You, Dan, fairly dead, 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 dead. In your trespasses and sins, both? Yes, both of them. I don't even know if they're different, but they're just both. You're like, it was, you're dead in those things. In which you formerly walked through the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air and of the spirit that's now working in the sons of disobedience. So he's basically like you were walking the way the world walks and you were empowered and thinking like the prince of the air, the demonic realm. That's who, that's where an unbeliever's at. That's what's going on with them. Among them, we also, we too, this is why, again, we want to give grace to unbelievers, because we were them. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Children of wrath. There's a couple of bestsellers called children of wrath, and you know, I always see them when they're like, I don't even think you're a Christian, you're using that phrase, you know, at some point. But, but he's basically saying that when he, when the, that those who aren't in Christ, there is, they, they will experience the event of his just judgment, on, uh, his corporate just judgment. And then he goes on to say, beautifully though, here, watch how this flips. We were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest of humanity, but God. But God, but God, but God. <laughs> 
But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he's loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive. Together with Christ, by grace, you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in grace, in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Do you see the, the, the enmeshment of wrath and grace? Yeah, see it? That, that, that it is, it's not God, like I said, angry and a bad nude. It is when I say, I finally will put an end to evil. Evil is an outlier. Evil is not permanent. Evil had a beginning and it will have an end. The Lord is intent on putting an end to evil, but he's intent not on just putting an end to evil by killing all the humans. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to save for himself a people who love righteousness, joy, and trust him, who know what evil is and say, it's not for us. By grace, I've been saved, and my, my appetite for that has completely diminished into nothing. Just a couple more verses about wrath. You got time for that, right? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. And just three more. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's so interesting to think about being a Christian and think, I actually haven't thought about the wrath of God in a long, long time. And I love it because we know we're saved. We're not worried about it. We're, you know, that whole deal. But in Scripture, it's really highly connected. Just listen to these last three voice, verses here. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.10. And we're supposed to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus. Who's this Jesus? He rescues us from the wrath to come. First Thessalonians 5, 9. For God's not destined us for wrath. He's not destined us for an event of God's just corporate judgment, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you are doing. And then finally, Revelation 6, 16. And they said, to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. Some of us have a broken theology. We think the father, he's the wrathful one. Jesus is the kind guy looking out for us. And the Holy Spirit just flitting around trying to like make, let's keep the peace. <laughs> our own broken home dynamics shot, you know, projected onto God. <laughs> uh, but but it, the, the wrath is actually the wrath of the Lamb, the wrath of the Spirit, the wrath of the Father. It is his just judgment, the event of his just judgment. This, the plan of salvation is not just the plan of the Son. It's the plan of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That he, God is one. Sometimes we break him apart too much, but he's actually one. And in his plan to create a new people who, are, who, uh, who don't love evil anymore, but love him and love his truth, this is, the, this is the pathway of salvation to be saved, yes, from our own sin, but also from the uh, pointed day of judgment. We're going to take communion and worship team kind of come on up and um, Hale, are you coming up to do this part? And so you, you know where we're, where we're headed. Hale's gonna, got permission to take it wherever, but I, I just want you to realize as you hold that cup that you have been saved from something. Not just your own foolishness. I have been saved from something, not just my own foolishness or rebellion, but I have been saved from God's righteous inbreaking, the event of his righteous inbreaking against human evil. Come on up, Hale. Wow. Yeah, can we give Dan a hand? That is... There's something so calibrating about what Dan has just shared, and I feel like it would be too quick to rush uh, into response, right, just in this very moment. So what I want us to do is just take a moment... Um, we're handing out anyone that doesn't have communion, so please put your hand up if you do need. But I was looking in Isaiah, and um, I've been 
been really taken by Isaiah 11, where it talks about the shoots that will come up from the stumps of Jesse. This shoot, it's Jesus that will rise from the stumps. And it says this, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. And just as Dan was sharing about wrath, I was thinking about how it is in that place of the fear of the Lord where we understand that there is an outpouring of judgment that Jesus took upon Him. That, that now my sin has something to fear. My shame has something to fear. My history that feels like it tries to disqualify me in the fear of the Lord, in this righteous God, because He took upon Him what I deserved. Now, what I deserve has something to be afraid of, has something to flee from, that I can run into His Name as He overcomes my lack. And I wanna read Isaiah 53, 4. Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon Him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with His wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to His way. And the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. I just want you to just take a moment with the Lord right now. And I want you in view of God's mercy, to, to actually, if there's anything in your life before we take communion, anything you need to bring to the Lord, anything that you need to receive the blood of Jesus, the body of Jesus for, anything that you need to bring to Him in repentance for, I just wanna invite you to do that now before Him and let the weight of this moment impact your heart. Because I believe as we do, that is where true transformation comes. I can't shake this feeling that maybe some of you are feeling the reality of what Jesus bore and you, you're wanting to come and kneel at the front. If that's you, I just want to say, if the, I think there might be a handful of people, you're welcome to do that in the house of God today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that you are a God of justice, that you are a God that is righteous, that you restore order, that your order and your government is perfect. And where your government is and where your righteousness is, there is where we thrive. Jesus, we recognise that on our own, we cannot walk in righteousness, but by Your blood that was poured out, God, we have been restored and Your wrath was poured out on Your Son in one moment so that we could live in eternal life with You. God, we thank You for Your righteousness and Your order on the earth. We thank You that it's not just in heaven that Your order remains, but You have released a way where there was no way, that Jesus became the way, the truth and the life for us to enter in to, uh, to a life that thrives because we no longer have to fear our sin, our shame or our iniquities. Oh, thank You, God. Thank You, God, that when chaos wanted to ensue on the world, You sent Your Son. Thank You that when chaos is trying to overthrow the minds of our children, You sent Your Son and Your punishment brought us peace. We receive today, Jesus, the purchase. We receive the cross that the Father that the Father brought as the provision 
for this, for our failures, so that we can become free. Church, would you take your communion cup right now? Let's take the broken body of Jesus. Sickness became a judgment of sin in Genesis. Brokenness in our minds became an outcome of the failure of mankind. But Jesus' body was broken and you can break the wafer right now. It was broken so that you could be restored. Oh church, we are on the right side of this moment. We are on the right side of this reality. We stand covered in the blood and purchased for with His broken body. Today, if you need healing in your body, if your family body needs healing and restoration, if your emotional relationships need to be healed, need to be restored, if your mind and anxiety has been plaguing you, if you need restoration today in the broken body of the Lamb of God, the perfect Son, you can receive. Let us take and eat. Today we receive Your blood as the payment for sin. We receive Your blood that washes us white as snow. Your blood doesn't just cleanse us, it restores us and it makes us a new creation. Your blood that was poured out to cover over every sin, every place where we willfully chose to reject You, to rebel against You, and where we willfully did not realise. Church, I can feel the freedom of the Lord today as we hold the blood in our hands. This was shed for a purpose and for a reason. There was nothing light about the moment when Jesus' hands were pierced and His feet were pierced and His side was pierced and the blood and the water flowed. There was nothing light about that moment, but it was His burden that purchased our rest. It was the weight of sin that He carried so that we could walk in the lightness and the freedom of the Gospel. So we take and drink in remembrance, Jesus, of what You have done for us. invite you to stand if you're able. If you're on your knees in the front, you can do whatever feels best to you. Dan, in his message, he called out a bunch of isms that are like chasms for us between the truth of the Word of the Lord and the reality that we're living. And I felt today there were freedoms for isms for consumerism, for alcoholism. There was freedom for transgenderism. There was freedom for for ways of thinking that are not in accordance with the government and the peace of the Lord. And I feel like today, the beauty of the Gospel is that we don't have to pay penance, that we simply receive today, that we get to receive today. And so we're gonna have the worship team just lead out in a song. But today, if you need freedom, If you need this hope to which we've been called that in one event, Jesus carried the weight of our sin. I just wanna invite you to raise your hands up high today. And we're gonna begin to sing this out. If the band doesn't mind just singing over me as I pray. Church, if you're able just to speak out in the Spirit right now. Church, if you're able just to speak out in the Spirit right now. 
blood is more than enough. The power of your blood is more than enough. We embrace your cross, Jesus. We embrace your cross. We embrace the crucifixion. We embrace this part, God, that sometimes is jarring for us in our humanity, knowing that it is your judgment that brings the establishment of righteousness. And we receive that today. I'm gonna invite the ministry team to come forward. If you're able, if you're a ministry team, would you start coming forward? I sense today, because of time, we need to wrap, but I sense that uh, there might be people in this room, you need to get right with the Lord. You might need to give your heart to Jesus. You know God or you have a, a spirituality, but you don't have a faith in Jesus Christ. And your works will not save you. Your own works will not bring salvation to you, but the cross of Jesus is what sets you free. The cross of Jesus, He bore the things that you couldn't bear. He overcome that, that which you would never be able to overcome on your own. And if that is you today, I wanna invite you to come forward and speak to one of our prayer servants and say, I need to give my life to Jesus today. Is there anyone in the room right now that you're like, that's me, that's me today. If you're online, put it in the chat. Just say, that's me, I received today. Thank you. We're gonna invite you. I, I see a hand, so we say yes to that. Amen, hallelujah. And if that is you, we wanna welcome you forward. Is there anyone else today? The band could keep playing for a second. Is there anyone else today? There's one, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna open the front today. I, I have a feeling like the Lord wants to reconcile some things in your life. 
Uh, some of you, you, you felt the weight of that message. And I wanna tell you, the weight isn't meant to crush you. It's meant to invite you to come in through the only way, through the cross of Jesus, into the freedom that He purchased for you. And you receive this by saying, Jesus, I receive you. And so uh, if, you need, if you need ministry today, we welcome you forward. Church, would you just put your hands on your heart right now? God, we thank You for Your cross. We thank You for Your peace. We thank You for Your freedom. We thank You that You're a righteous God. And we welcome You into every area of our lives. We welcome Your government, Your alignment, Your truth, that is the only truth, into our lives, into every area, into our thought life, into our belief systems, into our emotions. We thank You, God, that Your punishment brought our peace and we receive it today. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Let's lift up a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, church, we're gonna bless you as you head out. Thank you for coming. We love you. And uh, we trust that this is gonna impact your life throughout this week. Online church, we love you. We bless you. It's so good to see you. And may God just go with you as you just receive this word today. Amen. Hello, hello, online family. We're so glad that you joined us today. What a beautiful and powerful service we have. You may have noticed we have the amazing Dan Farrelly joining us. So just saw him on the big stage. Now he's here with us. <laughs> and I'm next to Ruth, who's taller than usual. So I that's know. kind of fun. <laughs> I've been different heights even today. I have a slightly smaller box than I had earlier today. <laughs> but Dan, would you mind just sharing your heart for our online church yeah, family? Yeah, I mean, um, you guys heard me for the last couple of, you know, 20 minutes or so. I, again, I, I think I just want to know God and I want to represent Him as He represents Himself. I'm going to speak about Him, how He speaks about Himself. In this part where He says, I will put an end to evil, I will step on the stage and there will be an expression of my judgment, which He calls wrath. And I think it's okay that He uses a word that actually catches us intellectually and emotionally both um, to kind of snap us to attention. But this is, you know, the heart of the Lord is that none should perish. I mean, this is the key, none should perish. That, um, that, and yet, he's, you're like, well, why doesn't he, why does he not let everybody live then? Because he's intent on putting an end to evil, putting an end to it. And so through the cross was, the, in his wisdom, the way to do both, create a new people and put an end to evil. And so we just celebrate him, and, and I want to pray for you guys as well. And um, just, Holy Spirit, I invite you to, to um, work on my brothers and sisters' hearts, even as you've been working on my heart as I've been thinking about this. And I think Haley said it so beautifully, like this isn't a weight that's meant to crush. It was when you spoke it to Israel and you spoke it to Judah, you were like, I want you to come back into covenant. This, is, this warning is about you returning. And so again, we see your heart uh, of love that says, come home, come home, come home. And so I just bless my brothers and sisters with just a deeper friendship with you, a connection with you, but to know this truth-telling side of you, this, this, this part of you who will come in and, and corporately bring a different reality, a new kingdom of righteousness. And we say we love that about you. We say it is just and good and true. And um, we are sold out to you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus name. Thank you. Amazing, yeah. Dan. And look, there's so much love for Dan. We see your comments. Um, you. Mara said, said she loves you, Dan. Thank Sir you. Pavel, Dan, what a blessing to us. Love Thank you, brother. You. So many of you have sent lovely messages and we really appreciate just getting to chat with you. Dan, thanks for being with us and for Good sharing with us today. Exactly. Bless you, bless you. Come on, such a good reminder today for us. And just for me, it just makes me so thankful for grace makes me so thankful for the finished work of the cross of how good he is to us. And uh, as D uh, Dan said, grace isn't just the forgiveness of sin. It's just not a get out a free card, but it's actual the actual power to transform us. Mm -hmm. It's to do things that we couldn't do uh, on our own before. And so we just are declaring and releasing grace over you yeah. uh, even today and as you go out for your week. Yeah, and guys, we as always want to partner with you in prayer. And so some of you uh, have been asking for prayer in the chat. Uh, we want you to know we value and see these prayers. So if you do have something you'd love for us to join in partnering with you, go ahead and real quick, just put it in the chat 
uh, we're going to pray over you and with you and we're going to believe for breakthrough. Like we want you to know that you are a part of our church family and that you're not battling or going through things alone, but you have people that want to contend with you. And then if you're also a new believer in Christ or you just made a decision for Jesus, even today on this service, we have a link in the description below and a link that we'll put in the chat for you to click on. That will take you to a Zoom room of ministry and you'll have more of our team that will walk you through a life of what it means to actually be a believer, be able to pray with you and minister to you. So really want you to encourage you to jump on that link and be able to receive there. We have people all around us here too, so a fun little kid, but. Seeing uh, Songs of Hope, um, is the, the screen name on YouTube, but she was just sharing, or he had this incredible experience of encounter during communion and just feeling the peace of God. And so if you need that, like the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19, 10, which means what he's done once, he's willing and able to do again. And I, I feel strongly that our online audience you guys are about to have some of the most incredible encounters that I feel like there's been a wooing that's happening online and that the Lord's actually painting a target on our online church family to have some radical, radical encounters, just like um, Songs of Hope, sorry, I don't know your real name, uh, it, it just described. And so we see Allison believing for healing. We need, uh, Eli needs a miracle for him and his family. Uh, Aaron, we see that you want your family to be saved. We have Alicia on Bethel TV for healing in her knee and in her back. Rosemary saying new knees so I can walk without crutches. Yes. Kath, we see you believing for healing for a flu bug. Mm -hmm. uh, Zachlina, we see you for breakthrough from my husband, our marriage and finances, please. And I haven't read out many of yours, but we're seeing them all Eye right here. With Johanna. And in a moment, go ahead and put them in your chat. If you're still wanting something and we haven't get it yet, we're gonna yeah. pray. And then even after your service, just to let you know that we actually see these prayer requests and we do pray. Yeah. We, do, we do believe God for breakthrough. Rachel, a lot. So you said, I'm a nurse with a back injury. I need healing. I want to work and to minister. We just on Wednesday saw someone in our online school it had a severe back injury. I believe it was for seven years and they were able to do jumping Mary jacks. Mary just said that. By the end, um, somebody else said that too. Mary said, I received back healing from Ruth on Wednesday. Oh, amazing. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and then I, just, I was just texting with somebody else who prayed for last night. I was playing pickleball uh, and needed back healing. And he said, it's not completely better, but it's significantly better. And so I'm just believing for you right now um, that that back injury and your back would be healed. If you need prayer for your back to be healed right now, I want you to just start bending down, touch your toes. I believe the Lord is loosening backs and setting people free from back pain in Jesus' name. And especially a release to work again. Um, we're thankful that you're a nurse and we want to give you just uh, nothing to get in your way of the mandate and the call of God on your life to bring healing. And Kathleen, we see that you're wanting to talk with a pastor. If you just go onto our website of Bethel.com and just search pastor on call, there's actually a number for you to be able to call and meet with one of our pastors and they'll be able to pray with you and meet with you yeah. on there. So get and on there. Grace has also said, healing for my two month old baby, hole in the heart. We are, so we have a nine month old baby. Um, Gracie has a hole in her heart, uh, VSD, so it's in the, in the bottom. Moderate um, VSD. So we've been praying and believing for a breakthrough. Um, and going through all the things that to walk through with a baby with a heart defect. But we just had a scan at, uh, on Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday morning. And she, she has regular appointments with the cardiologist. They just said that it's actually getting smaller. So um, we are believing for the same for you that Grace, we declare over your baby the hole to close right now in Jesus' name. No heart failure and no problems in Jesus' name. Yeah. And so whatever your prayer request is, whether it's an infected foot or full healing for your heart or deliverance from confusion, mm -hmm. Father, I just want you to hold out your hands right here. And Grace said moderate VSD. And I just That's prophesy what yeah. he's done for our baby, he's willing and able to do for you, Grace. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're believing for a miracle or you wanna partner with us for praying over people, I know this sounds weird, but go ahead and stretch your hand to the screen. And if you're believing for a miracle, just hold out your hands like you're about to receive a gift and we're gonna pray for you. Mm -hmm. And then if you can test it out, I want you to start testing out your body after prayer because really believe there's gonna be a, a wave of healing released over you right now. So Father, we just thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for family members becoming saved. We thank you for marriages being restored, for finances coming into complete order. Father, we thank you for restoration. Father, we thank you for infection being healed. We thank you for back pain.
pain and knee pain and neck pain and migraines being healed right now. Any pain, any form of disease or cancer, we command to die right now. And Father, we just release over Grace's baby right now that her whole, her the hole in her heart would be completely made new, that it'd be completely whole, no more issues, that her neck scan and, and checkup, they would say, wow, what happened? And so Father, we declare breakthrough right now over every person in the call, complete healing in Jesus' name. Yeah, we bless you. Um, again, as always, if you notice God doing something, let us know. We'd love to hear your testimonies. You can always also put it in the chat, uh, what God is doing. We're super thankful for how He moves uh, in the room and online. He's so kind. He's so good. We bless you to have a, a week marked with surprises from heaven. I keep thinking of Ephesians 3, where it says He'll do abundantly above what we can ask or imagine. And for that to happen, it needs to be a surprise. And I just saw a picture of us kind of walking around the corner and seeing surprises after surprise. And I feel like God's going to surprise surprise you with His goodness this week. And so um, get ready, expectant for seeing His goodness at multiple times for you and your family. We're thankful for you being with us. And hey, tonight is such a treat. Peter Mattis, who's our community worship pastor, is going to be preaching. And there's something unique and special on Pete right now. Love and so Pete. just for encounters and um, he's one of the most incredible humans. So we would love if you want to join in on that tonight, that's at 6 p.m. And we'd and love just to saw, see you. Uh, Jenny said, my knee is better. <laughs> one prayer for more faith. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. So if you notice any change in your body, go ahead and put them in the chat. And it's not its not for us. It's actually for him. It's to recognize what he's doing. And it's, it's for the people actually watching. And your testimony will prophesy to those even watching and be able to receive it. So if you have a testimony of pain going down, pain decreasing or completely disappearing, put it in the chat. Even if it's pain going from an eight to a four, that's still God moving and doing something. So put it in the chat and we're just gonna believe for full restoration, full healing right now in Jesus name. Thank you, Father. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Well, bless you guys. Thank you for being with us. We'd love to see you again at 6 p.m. tonight and have a fantastic week. Thanks for joining us. Bless you.